Hello, Sonia. Hi. 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 So, here we are at the Red River book launch of Sonia Menon. The book is called The Song of Silence. And let me begin by reading a bit about Red River for those who don't know about Red River Publishing House in Delhi. And it's a, a phenomenally young and doing very well across the world. A publication house which started in 2017. Let me read a brief bio on Red River. Red River is an independent publishing outfit largely focused on bringing out quality poetry collections, especially of first time poets and poetry in translation. Established in 2017 and based in New Delhi, Red River has so far published 40 titles, including authors like Nabina Das, Chilmil Breckenridge, Sun Sukrita Paul Kumar, Ramu Ramanathan, Uttaran Das Gupta, Klaus Ankerson, Robert Wood, Gayatri Majumdar, Nishi Chavla, and myself, and Abhimanyu Kumar, and a lot of really, and now we have Soumya, of course, and many such brilliant poets. The Red River title, Selected Poem, Sanantatati, translated by Debijuti Sarma, was long listed for the first Jayadev National Poetry Award 2017. And Raindrops Chasing Raindrops by Paresh Tiwari and a dear friend Paresh was the recipient of the Touchstone Distinguished Book Award 2017. Exclusively run by a single individual from his residence, Red River prides in itself outside the status as it believes that poetry cannot be commodified. We survive by being rare and being unique. Yes, a lots of kudos to Debya Jyoti for that. And let me now introduce, go on to introduce Soumya here today. And uh, Soumya Menon is an author, poet, and storyteller. Formerly, she was a national and international journalist with reputed publication and media houses. When she's not writing poetry or short stories, she works as a marketing communications professional. Her literary work balances the divide between reasoning and mindfulness, realism and existentialism. She also loves writing poetry and short stories for children for all ages, articles, and flash fiction. She has always been inspired by metaphysical poet John Donne. In 2018, she was selected as one of the top 50 poets as a part of the Great Indian Poetry Contest organized by On Fire Cultural Movement. And her poem, Gambler, was published in an international anthology, Artish too. The anthology also includes the greats like Gulzar and Taslima Nasrin. Soumya has a degree in psychology, English literature and journalism and a degree in audiovisual communication. She, is currently, she currently resides in Bangalore. Welcome Soumya and I'm really happy to be introducing you here. Thanks. And uh, <clears throat> I also now go on to welcome Shubhashree Rajendran who will be in conversation with Soumya uh, for the next half an hour or odd time and speaking to her on poetry and we'll be listening to a few poems and then she'll be speaking on the journey, Soumya's journey and how the book came about. So here goes a brief introduction about Shubhashri Rajendran. She's a host for One Paid Spotlight, which is a professional social media platform for artists. She interviews artists from different backgrounds and has conducted sessions with celebrity artists like Filmfare Award winning Jyoti Kapoor and LGBTQ plus activist Praful Labaveja. She's also the international news correspondent for Boring News Co, an online flash newsletter platform. She is an alumnus of University of Sheffield, UK. And I'm really happy to say that I was really glad to be part of the one page spotlight and Purnima did interview me and it was a lovely session. We had poetry and activism and I'm sure I'm leaving the stage open to both of you to go ahead and have a conversation and over to you, uh, Shubhashree. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. So hi, Soumya. First of all, I would hi. like to wish you for your book. 
and uh, starting off tell us uh, how did the title of the book you know was born within you okay so um before i uh, explain that i would like to show this is the book it, it's beautifully made uh, it's exactly how i wanted it to be uh, working with the publisher uh, we designed it together and uh, it's called the song of silence um why the song of silence and uh, you would if you would think that um, the song of silence would uh, talk about happy feelings and um, you know uh, joyous feelings and things like that, um, but I'll explain where it came from. So there is a poem called the Song of Silence uh, within this collection, um, which specifically was written during the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, this was March uh, 2020, and um, when the whole world was um, had suddenly been forced into, um, you know, uh, quarantine and uh, lockdown. Um, I suddenly had this um, this uh, vision to uh, to express the feeling that we are all going through because it's everything was silent, right? And silence had taken over our lives, and um, there was so much happening. We didn't know what was happening. Uh, everything was unknown, and um, uh, the idea was to express everything that uh, I was feeling at that point of time and, and, uh, and describe what was happening to other people as well, uh, to speak the truth about uh, what silence actually does to you. Uh, uh, that reminds me of, uh, some, um, of a Buddhist monk that I uh, follow, a Vietnamese monk, uh, who says in his book about the, the power of silence, he, he says that um, silence is what lets you be the way you are it reveals layers and layers of who you actually are it makes you question who am i and that is what i wanted to bring to the forefront so the song of silence the title um i just thought it it made a great title for the collection because um i wrote this entire collection over a period of 60 days uh, during the pandemic uh, yeah so i decided that you know i will Right, and I started my uh, platform on uh, Instagram. I'm not a great Instagrammer, and uh, I just started uh, um, on Instagram called Poet of Phil. And I decided that uh, you know I'm going to write ab about this every day. So I started writing every single day while I was writing on the platform. I also started writing um, this collection. The intent was initially was never to publish the book but eventually it became that i met red river and um i'm really thankful that i met uh, them at the right time and um this book was born and um so what i noticed that is that the entire collection somewhere was knit together with with silence so this book is i would say a memoir uh, a, 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 what do I say? A memoir of silence. What what really does to you? Um, the the resilience that it brings. Um, the way you face your different emotions. You know, while thoughts flow. And yeah, so that that's that's how the the title came about. But uh, there is a poem called "The Song of Silence," which is specifically. I mean, the intent was uh, to bring out the uh, the uh, uh, the conundrum um that the human race was facing um and how uh, let's say animals around will will look at it look at what we are going through other beings we are just a part of this universe we're just a small portion of the universe what about the other beings so it was it's it's a way of um saying that um that we are a part of nature we have to know how to s survive fight this uh conquer our fear um, but live in the moment, whatsoever, right? So that's that's how so, it came. So you wrote this book within like sixty days. So what was your like every day was like? So did you have a process? Did you like think about you know certain things? That's things that's happening around you. How did it happen? So uh, I had a routine. So we had to obviously we were suddenly put into this box and we had to live inside that box. Uh, without moving out, right? So I, I formed a routine for myself where I would wake up and I, I practice uh, mindful meditation. So, um, so the first thing I would do is uh, uh, do my meditation in the morning, and and I don't know how. Uh, 
an idea would just pop up while I finish my meditation. And the next thing I do is I write. So <laughs> I start my day uh, with writing and then uh, the next morning again. So it was a routine that just, it just, you know, went uh, in a flow. And, um, and I, didn't, I didn't really pick a topic. Uh, I mean, it would just come to me because that's how much uh, was happening inside your own head. And when you talk to other people, you, you see what's happening around you and you, you start thinking uh, because it forced you to actually think of your now. Uh, you know, that's the power of now, the power of being in this moment. So that's, that's what happened to me as well. So as a writer, I thought, uh, what more can be uh, more powerful than expressing your raw, honest feelings, um, you know, on paper. So, yeah, that's how. Amazing. Uh, so, Samya, uh, we all know that uh, poets are not born overnight. There's a journey that they take up. So how was your childhood like and how did it, you know, shape your uh, life as a poet? Um, well, I, there was uh, definitely a clear moment when I did think that uh, writing is all I can do and poetry is all, uh, all I can write. Uh, that's the only form that make, made sense to me at a very young age, in fact. Um, so I recall that uh, at, at the age of six, it started at the age of six, uh, when, I, uh, when we would, I'm from Kerala, so I was born, born in Kerala, but uh, raised in Bangalore, and uh, we would take our uh, summer vacation to Kerala, and um, my granddad was, uh, my dad's dad was really ill, so I, I, we would, there was no conversation between us, I was, I was very little, and uh, but then what I noticed and what enthralled me was that uh, his he was a English graduate, an English literature graduate. So he had loads and loads of books everywhere in the house, in this large house. Uh, and uh, you know, every time I got a chance to to escape from playing with my cousins and my brother, I would uh, I would pick a book and go to the attic sit and read. Now, I, I wouldn't say that at that point in time, I really understood the concept. And, and they were all English uh, uh, authors like Chaucer and uh, uh, the Bronte sisters, there was Shakespeare, there was um, Conrad, um, Marlowe, a lot of them. Uh, so today I know who they are, <laughs> but at that point in time, uh, I did not. But then that kind of uh, made me realize that, okay, this is probably what I want to do. And I started writing at the age of seven i started uh, with poems and uh, simple poems wow. uh yeah i started with uh, with nature and that's something that i connect with even today in all my poems you'll see in some form or the other there is there is uh, uh you know in, in inclusive i mean i've i've included nature uh, in the poetry so i uh, started writing about nature and it it became um you know everyday thing i would uh, write every time I come back from school. Um, I had journals and stuff like that at that young age. And um, uh, I got published uh, by a few, uh, at that time I was, I was uh, born in the 80s. So um, we just had these magazine, newspaper magazines, uh, local magazines that I would send uh, my entries to. And some of them got published, some of them didn't. And that's how it started. The journey started like that. And then I was exposed to, um, I come from a very creative family. Um, uh, there are a few uh, authors and writers, but um, more than that, there, were, uh, there, there was this maternal um, great grand uncle who uh, took interest in my work. Uh, and uh, uh, at the age of 13 or 14, I, I wrote a very well-structured poem. Um, according to me, it was well-structured. It, it was a sonnet. And <laughs> I sent it to him, and he critiqued it. And that was the first time that someone had critiqued. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, that kind of instilled this thing in me of asking why something is the way it is. And that's why, I mean, for me, reasoning is so important in, when I write as well. Um, and a, a, anything in life in general that um, I question the why behind everything. So uh, you'll see that in my poetry uh, through and through. And that's how and then um, I got into journalism. Uh, journalism really helped me uh, express some parts of uh, me that I, I mean, I wanted to write. And uh, after my degree in uh, literature, psychology and journalism, I 
I wanted to combine these three subjects in some form. And, and I have this weird, um, you know, um, uh, interest in understanding criminal behavior. Why do they do what they do? Uh, so that's how I got into that. And then through Did my writing. An to it? Sorry? Did you get an answer to it? Why do we do what we do? Uh, <laughs> yes, I'll come to that point. Um, um, sure. Yes, uh, there is a reasoning for why we do what we do. Uh, uh, do you want me to answer it right now? <laughs> I think it would be great. <laughs> okay. Sure. So I feel that every every human being is born. I mean, all of us. See, it, it, the acceptance that life is difficult um, is understood, right? Life is. Uh, I mean, there is no life without um, sufferings, uh, suffering, right? So the acceptance of that is what is important. So um, uh, why we do what we do is because we all are born with some form of trauma, right? It could be trauma of birth, it could be trauma after birth. In some form of trauma is not necessarily something that uh, it's not an accident or just an accident or, um, you know, an untoward incident. It's not just that. It could be anything. That's how the human brain works. So, um, so as, it, as, as you're born and you experience these different things, you're trying to um, understand who you are from childhood uh, because the sense of self actually sets in for a child at a very young age. So uh, I think that trauma is what, uh, and then um, what we understand of ourselves. Uh, makes you do certain things. You grow into being certain, and the and the fact that trauma is not just what you've gone through, right? It's uh, it's what what has been passed on, the beliefs that have been passed on from your uh, previous generations. Uh, you're carrying that with you. So um, I feel that is that is that is what makes us do what we do, uh, because we we create this sense of self at a very young age, which uh, becomes actions. Um, and uh, most of it is not true because we've really not analyzed it. We've not tried analyzing it at all. So that's, that's, that's an excellent way to analyze things. And coming to this, have you written any poem that's related to what you just said about human psychology and things? If you have any of it, could you please read it for us? <laughs> sure. Yeah, there's one that um, there's one uh, called Paper Town, which is uh, specifically about, uh, I mean, so I was a crime journalist. I specialized in uh, um, one of the areas was counterterrorism, and that was of great interest to me. Um, so I'll read the poem. Um, His eyeballs did not move an inch, continuous glare of recognition. They sat in a dark room in an unknown place, screeching noise of metal wheels on a nearby railway track broke her silence. She took a deep breath as the odor of morbid guilt filled her lungs. He saw her lips twitching and knew she was going to make way for her voice. He hijacked it. Can you arrange for my best friend to visit me? The loud call of Azan distracted him for a second. He looked back at her and asked again, can you? Her muscles tightened as his eye sockets filled up, the hazel of it shining in the light that seeped through a window. She let the tears roll down his cheek. He smoke, spoke again. He's a Hindu, my childhood friend. I want to see him. I never meant to do this. We were poor. My sisters were small. I was 19 when my hands felt the cold metal that could kill a million. They said they would look after my family, and I was the chosen one. I traveled a lot to familiar and unfamiliar valleys of truth and lies. The smell of gunpowder mixed with flesh and blood seemed like love. I want a degree in business management. He laughed. The eerie comfort of his laughter strangely enlivened her senses. When I shot at that man in the university, all I felt was a strange exhilaration. Today, I wish I hadn't done any of it. I want to live. They sat in silence as little fragments of hope circled their bodies, clutching onto their skins. She got up to walk away. He said, thank you for listening to me. I'll write to you.
Wow. Wow. That was amazing. She yeah. was like a mix of regret and, you know, the want to live. So can you elaborate on that? Sure. So the, the name Paper Town itself will probably, I mean, you'll wonder why was it called Paper Town because it's this, it's this uh, delirious uh, world uh, uh, um, you know, a non-existential world that this person creates because he knows what he's done is not right. But he's he's you know split uh, in his thought process. He, on one hand, he says it was love, and the other, on the other hand, he he regrets. Uh, and so there's there's loss, uh, there's grief. He's trying to uh, you know um, you know you know somehow. Uh, say that okay i want to relive my life uh, so it's this the conversation between two people uh, the other person being uh, 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 a psychotherapist uh, so he's being interviewed uh, by this psychotherapist and uh, this, this ter uh, terror suspect is uh, talking about his experience right and um, so he specifically talks about how he wants to meet his uh, friend that's uh, uh, that, that's again with the idea of guilt because he's uh, he's been tagged as someone or something. So uh, it's this fake world that he creates and how he tries to, uh, you know, uh, ensnare the other person into that world, believe what he's saying. It's this narcissistic world that he's living in. Um, and that's what this is about. And um, I think um, most criminals um I, I can i can clearly say are living in this in this world or in this fake world so this is this was one way of expressing what they actually are going through all right so somia you just told uh, the role that your great grandparents and your parents have pay, played in you becoming a writer so could you like uh, like even in your writings it is seen so could you recite a poem that is uh, that is drawn from your love and gratitude for them, for us. Sure. Um, there is a section called um, From Vodka to Whiskey to Wine, which which is entirely personal. And that's where I've included, there's, there's an ode to a friend and my uh, grandmother and my mother as well. Uh, but I will read one that I wrote for my grandmother. Um, okay. I couldn't say goodbye, but I remember you every single day since the day you passed. On days when I achieved something I had set my mind on, I wish I could tell you. On nights when monsters hurt me, I wish I could lie on your lap and smell your skin. It always gave me comfort. I tell mom that I wish you were around in this age of social media. I always wonder how you would have adapted to it. I've started looking like you. That's what everyone says. I thought I always looked like you. I wish you were here to see the little garden I have built. You would have loved it. I kept some of your things for a long time and then decided not to hold on to them. I haven't been able to let go of Amachan's obituary. I have it safe. You loved him so much. I have almost all your habits. You would have laughed till your eyes teared up and your mouth drooled. I love knitting, stitching, and making little things. I recently discovered that your name also means born in the springtime. And I can't help but think how beautiful it was when you took your first breath outside of your mother's home. There's a miner's home nestled on the roof of my balcony. And it feels like you are always watching. Quite emotional. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. That's amazingly done. And I, uh, for someone who also loved my grandmother, even I could like feel it. And I'm sure whomever is going to read it, read the poem, is going to feel it. So, so that's amazingly written. Uh, so, so coming to John Dunn and how his writing has inspired you. What about it has inspired you? So uh, just to uh, give the audience uh, a quick, quick uh, idea of um, who John Dunn is, and um, uh, are, you, are you still there? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, 
All right. So um, John Donne is, uh, was a metaphysical poet from, um, I mean, an English poet. Uh, so metaphysical poetry, I mean, I, I, I won't get into the entire um, nuances of what it is because it's, uh, I mean, it, it was quite controversial at that point of time. And um, uh, so I can connect it to what we are going through today and, and the things that uh, spiritual gurus and um, everyone who practices mindfulness talks about. Uh, so metaphysical poetry was all, was all about expressing your feelings the way it is, right? It is those raw emotions, the complex emotions, um, uh, the experiences. Uh, it could be love, it could be loss, grief, whatever it is that you want to talk about. It, it was that with 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 conceit. It was with uh, using paradoxes, using uh, metaphors, using personification. I mean, those are uh, techniques, but then uh, it was a very um, unusual way of expressing feelings in a raw form. And they, uh, they speak about the, the spirit and the body uh, and the relation between the, spirit, the spiritual and, and, uh, and the body. Uh, and uh, that somehow connects to the fact that, that mindfulness helps you do that, right? I mean, that's, that's a way of being in the present, feeling your feelings. So um, that that's what has, uh, that kind of inspired me because I, I mean, and the form of writing because it was, uh, though a lot of language was controversial, um, I think the idea of uh, telling a story uh, of how you're feeling about something um, in a very unusual form. And I remember John Dunn's, uh, like I was talking to you earlier today, John Dunn's, uh, one of my favorite poems is called The Flea. And just to give an example of what I mean by unusual is that uh, The Flea was uh, uh, his version of expressing his, um, um, you know, his, his unhappiness at the same time happiness about how he and his lover have consummated uh, their relationship. Uh, so he talks about how the flea bites him and then bites her and, and their blood becomes one inside the flea. So it was a very unusual way of expressing uh, his love for his lover. But, <laughs> but uh, so there is, there is remorse, there is um, happiness. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's how it was. So that's, that's, how, um, that's what has inspired me specifically. So awesome. Then, yeah. So you spoke about nature and how that has inspired your writing. So one of your poems, uh, the artist, I feel, is having a lot of connotations where it is related to nature. So if you could re recite that and how you visualized it, you know, for us. Okay. We are all artists, I would say, <laughs> in some <laughs> form or the other. Totally. Uh, yes. Um, Life in itself is, can be seen as a knot yes. that we draw. Yeah. So the I way mean, we live is how we act yeah. as an artist. Correct. The world is a, you know, that's what Shakespeare says. So, so rightly says. World so, is a stage. Yes. And they're all actors. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, but do we have to be that way? I mean, um, it's, it's, it's a point of debate, actually. Uh, we don't have to be that way as well. So that's where, you know, I mean, um, why should we design our life? I think we are living in such a way that we, have, we design our life from the day we, I mean, from the moment we wake up to the moment we sleep and then the, we think about the next day and the next day and, the, you know? Future. <laughs> okay. Um, you stood watching the mighty flight. She rose above the clouds, a speck in the sky. You saw her maneuvering, your eyes gleaming with joy. Her strong arms glided through the wind. You gazed and gazed as she took her flight, her flight of freedom. Your toes played with the sand slipping through, the rising waves slowly drifting your body. You lay amid the gigantic element buoyant and wondrous, body and soul, singing the song of love, tender loving. You gave in as you sailed through its silent embrace. You ran as fast as your legs could bear, sand flushing in and out of the tiny pathways of your toes, your body levitating with every wide step you took, that blood machine pumping in adrenaline to your veins. 
uh, that air pump stretching in and out of the walls of fury. You reach the mountain top and exhale, a smile made way. A flame showed far away in the middle of the ocean, rising slowly from the bosom of its flickering nature. Enthralled, ignited, yet shy, it moved closer to a tide. Keep it si simple, silly, you whispered. She smiled and rolled her eyes like a child. Love blossomed and a beauty was born. Wow. <laughs> so this wow. is a, uh, this was, how do I say? I mean, I wanted to depict how an art, and I'm talking about an actual artist, uh, mm -hmm. who paints, right? So uh, this, the, the, the phrase towards the end is the painting talking back to uh, the artist saying, keep it simple. <laughs> and then a love, love was born, as in he, complete, he or she completed the, uh, the work of art. Um, so th there's a lot of emotion. There's, so um, if you ever notice how, a, uh, how an artist, so my mother is an artist. Uh, wow. she's, she's a painter. So uh, I've, I've watched how she, uh, you know, she, she's so observant and there's a, every time she sits to paint, um, until she finishes, she doesn't get up. I mean, there's something that th there's a certain vision uh, and she has to finish it and then she gets up. So it's, it's like telling a story. It could be one chapter of the story, right? I mean, it's like for us writers, it's like writing, okay, we write one chapter or one page of whatever, one paragraph. So uh, it's, it's like that, you finish that. So when you observe these artists, I mean, the, the way they, um, they play with colors and um, so it was my way of depicting what goes through uh, the relationship that the artist builds with the work. Uh, that is nothing but, um, it, it is born out of love. So it is it, wow. all the feelings and uh, it, I've brought in nature because that's, I think that's the rush that they have um there's a story that they're trying to say right so that's that's how this came about awesome so also one of the poems that really touched me was uh was miming to their divers it's for it's, there's so much pain and there's so much you know loneliness and agony and a lot of you know feelings that a woman has while going through a breakup or for that matter even going to a divorce. So could you talk about that and what was running in your mind when you were writing it? So uh, this was again one of those things that came out of uh, the everyday experiences because I, I wrote this during the pandemic, I mean the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, one of the things that was being talked about, I think which came out uh, in the open was uh, the, the, uh, the domestic violence that was happening across the world because uh, spouses were locked inside a house, right? And women helplessly, women or men, uh, helplessly were not able to uh, call for help. Uh, and I know so many people um, who have, who, who were at the last stage of their separation and they were still living, because, living under the same roof um, with, the, with the ex. Um, because there, there was a child or children involved and the, the pain, the grief, the agony uh, of not feeling safe enough to, to stay in it or to walk away, right? I mean, the, the feeling of being safe uh, is so important. So um, it was one way of uh, describing what really happens um, to, a, I mean, what is the journey that uh, that the two individuals actually go through. Uh, you can you can replace the genders honestly. I mean, it could be a Definitely. man or a woman. Yes. Man or a woman. Yes. So uh, it's it's what really leads to leads to the person taking that decision of feeling safe enough to actually walk out of it. Yeah. You know you uh, so you either like I said uh, you are uh, not sure about walking out. And you're not sure about staying in either. So it's that that uh, that experience, that emotion, the uh, the grief, the chaos, the, pain, the chaos in your mind. Yes, um, yeah. It's that one decision that you need to take and then move forward. So that's that's how this. Uh, I've described it in such a way that it's it's about everything that 
I mean, uh, the, there's a description of wh what the night and the day brings in, uh, you know, um, what, what silence brings in. Uh, you know, the silence, the miming is basically they're not talking to each other at all, right? And that silence, yeah. plus the silence of, uh, and it's just the, the, the child's um, crying that you would hear. Uh, and that, that's one of the reasons why probably uh, the person stays. Uh, so that's, that's what it is. That's what it was about. It was just a one, one small way of, I mean, what, it's just a very tiny bit of the pain that uh, people go through because they, they're not realizing how much harm they do to each other by not taking that one decision. But then it's up to them, right? I mean, it's totally up to them. It was just one way of starting off a conversation about this. We need to talk about it. And in India, specifically, we really, really need to. I mean, it's high time. Mental health is, uh, we've spoken about this before, right? So um, mental health is a crucial thing in India. And I think this is one of the things that is leading to a lot of um, um, uh, ill health as well. So, Definitely. yeah. And also a lot of like the poems that you've written uh, speaks about courage and self-help. Uh, so what what are you trying to you know tell the readers through you know um, through your writing so um this uh, this uh book collection has parts of uh, what i wanted to talk about when initially you asked me um so how do, how do you uh, the the whole thing about um, why do people do what they do um so one of the things that I want to, I'm an advocate of is a trauma informed healing, right? I mean, um, yes, we talk about, um, and, and self help is the right word, and self healing is, is another word that I would say that people should start thinking about and start um, um, advocating as well, uh, which is that you have to look at what you have actually gone through for you to start healing. I mean, you can go through years and years of therapy. Um, we all are going through terrible time and this pandemic has been, I think it's added trauma that has come into our lives. Are we, are we looking at it from the trauma that it has, you know, uh, brought into our lives? Are we looking at everything else um, because of what has been caused because of the, the effect of the pandemic? Uh, or are we just going with the flow and doing the same thing the same way? Uh, we really need to look at everything from the perspective of trauma. So one of my one of my key things is to tell people that you need to self heal. Self is the important word there. You need to really, really self heal and find out for yourself uh, what is causing what uh, I mean, causing you to be the way you are. Right. So um, um, that's one of the things. And um, the other thing that I I, I really want to talk about is uh, resilience. We're losing you, Samia. Uh, Can you hear me? There's a lag. Is, is this clear? Uh, there's a lag. OK. Uh, is this better? Yes, it's better. OK. Um, so the other thing I want to talk about is resilience. Uh, the resilience that anything brings, uh, um, uh, with, uh, even even the fact that silence brings in so much of resilience. Uh, I mean, you sit, like I think all of us have in some form or the other become really resilient, haven't we? I mean, um, this, <laughs> this sitting inside a box has really made us. Uh, but resilience is, you know, the meaning of resilience is not really, um, oh, I can, I'm, I'm living through this painful thing and then I can get on with life. No, it's about feeling what you're feeling right now. If you're feeling pain, feel it, right? Yeah. If, you want, if you want to cry, cry. So that's what I, th I think we all need to do and that's what I would uh, I advocate as well. And the other thing that I believe in is positive psychology. Um, again, all tied to the uh, the idea of mindfulness and being present. Um, so th that's that's what I, I, know I want to... I want to Push people the question, who are you? I mean, ask yourself that. I mean, don't look at others' perspective of you. It's you yourself and need to understand who you are. And that's important to you, not, not for, you know, to show the world. <laughs> so that's, that's what I want to talk about through my work. 
Awesome. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you one last question, and that would be, what is that you want to tell the world? You know, because we're going through so much. I don't think this is going to end anytime soon. And like you said, it has already caused so much trauma. And moving forward, like you always say, like healing and moving forward. What is that? What a poem can do? Like what? good writings and good writers can do yes you know it's, it's very important because a lot of them a lot of writers are talking about it like yes. you and a lot of other writers as well uh, through their poems through the writings to the short stories and to at least even talk about it to start a conversation you know so so what is that you would want to tell other writers like you and also uh, what you'd want to you know do about it so like you rightly said, I think this uh, this era of the pandemic has brought out, um, I think a lot of writers have, I think Madhu will agree with me as well. A uh, lot of writers are talking about this and I think we need to continue this movement. And I would say, I'll be honest, yes, a poet is born. I mean, it, I mean, you need, it, it's from the childhood and all, all of that is true but i think all of us have a writer within us and i, w I would urge people i mean uh, writing is one of the ways that uh, that can lead you to the path of healing and i would encourage people to uh, to write journal journal yes journal you know <laughs> write your feelings that's one way of starting it off and i do that i and i i i have no qualms about talking about the fact that when i'm down i'm down um you know and how do i lift myself up uh you know i write uh so that's that's what i would encourage so i've spoken about healing i've spoken about resilience um i've spoken about uh, how people should really start questioning about who they really are uh, from their own eyes right and not from another person's eyes so that's 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 all i would push for people to do Thanks a lot for that, Samya. It was great interacting with you. Thank it was you really so much. Thought provoking. Thank I'm you. sure for all of us, a lot of them have congratulated you uh, on your new book, and uh, I'm sure they all enjoyed the session. Uh, so I I leave it to you to say, uh, you know, uh, talk to them and. Okay. Uh, just one quick thing. Let's have one last poem, Samya. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is there any anything that you would like me to read or shall I pick? Okay, yeah, um, I do have one which I think will uh, resonate with what we've been talking about as well. Um, it, this is called Not All Wars Are Bad. Um, some battles are unavoidable, even the silent ones. You go in with a single agenda and come out barely pulling through. Yet it ends with revelations and realizations, opening up perspectives you never knew existed, edging on the need for change, a little closer to liberation. Every fighter gets affected in their own way. Some come out earning stripes, accomplishing near impossible missions. Some emerge as battle-tested warriors. Some come out injured of the trenches, facing dangers, survivors ready to put themselves out there a little more you may you may want to erase the ugly gory moments especially the swinging slinging and smashing but you realize you need it to build a better world with better people like you and i so carry on with grace even with little blood on your face and that scar to remind you about lessons learned revival of old connections and discovery of new trails. Wow. Thank you. I, ju I just want to say one word, um, uh, Madhu sure, and sure, Shubha. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, please, please, um, please. You know, I really appreciate uh, you bringing this, uh, uh, you know, uh, together because in these difficult times, it's, uh, we need it. At the same time, it's quite difficult, right, to bring people together. Uh, so I really, really appreciate uh, for having done this. It was my pleasure.
<laughs> I wanted to thank both of you, Soumya and Shubhashri. The whole, I mean, the conversation was enthralling and enriching and gripping. I was all, I just didn't want to be on screen, that's all. But I was taking notes like a kid. And at the cost of sounding repetitive, I would go on to say that, I mean, the journey of the book and the process of your writing and how, I mean, the grandparent poems and, and the whole uh, discussion about mental health which is very crucial right now. And so, so uh, it was a very beautiful, this, this conversation is a keeper, I'm going to say that. And uh, thank you both for being here. It was lovely listening to both of you. I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy this conversation on Red River. And thanks once again to Red River. And congratulations to Soumya thank you. on the book. Thank and you. thanks to Shubhashri. Thank you. Yeah. Alvida. Bye. Bye. Bye.